Imagine how you would feel if your favorite uncle was feuding and angry with your two favorite cousins. That's how I feel right now. FTR and Eric Bischoff. Man, I am just torn, 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 torn over this entire situation. And you know who I blame for this? I blame Tony Khan for tweeting all that stuff that he tweeted about Jinder Mahal and this sort of nonsense last week. That's where it all began. And then Uncle Eric got involved. And then, so FTR was promoting an AEW show in a town, I'm not sure where, but they did a local interview. And they had this to say about my good friend, Uncle Eric. I don't think Tony Khan gets the credit that he deserves because he uh, afforded a lot of people uh, a lot of jobs and a lot of income. I mean, even if you look outside of AEW, you got all these uh, old time uh, miserable podcasters like Eric Bischoff and, you know, some of the others uh, who are who make a living just by going on their podcasts and burying Tony in AEW when uh, they know that. AEW is 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 a place where business is thriving, um, where AEW is a place that is helping change professional wrestling for the positive. So not only did Tony give us uh, give us and every uh, you know hundreds of other people a living, um, he's afforded a living to some people who otherwise would be sitting miserable, bankrupt in their house. I think he's really mad that Tony wouldn't give him a job the few times he was there to collect a paycheck. Yeah. So. So I'm going to stop right there and interject. Um, and of course I expect Dax. And I like Dax. And I like Cash. I've known Cash for a long time. I mean, back before he was even in NXT, we ran a lot of the same roads together. And I and I like the guy. He helped facilitate a picture of me and Shinsuke Nakamura for crying out loud. So I don't want this to be taken like I'm knocking people. But... I will point out cold hard facts. I don't know that AEW is necessarily a business that's thriving. I think it's a business that's kind of stuck. Um, and Tony's got money, so maybe he can afford to be stuck. But the numbers, it, it really hasn't, it's kind of stagnant. It's its really not growing. Um, maybe I'm wrong. Uh Maybe there's some house show numbers that I don't know about or something like that. But as far as like like TV ratings, now I did go up last week, and I I think people might have been uh, curious about the Samoa Joe hook thing with all this hubbub on Twitter. But um, you know, and I expect them to defend their boss. Like, um, and Eric's going to make a comment about this later. But I I don't, I don't know that it's thriving. But anyway. Um, my point is Uncle Eric and specifically, I think Conrad took more exception to this than Eric did. You know, there was going to be a response, but Conrad Thompson legitimately seems like he's got his feelings hurt. Listen to this. Yeah, I like him. I mean, I talked to Dax on, on a pretty regular basis, somewhat regular basis. And I've been fortunate enough to help Dax and cash professionally and, uh, that was my great honor and, and took a lot of pride in that and really appreciate their work. They're my favorite tag team and it's not even a debate. Like I just love their old school look and feel and I love the power and glory, uh, former finisher and who doesn't love the shatter machine. It's I like these guys and man, they were just all over you on a local interview. Um, I did find it interesting that he came out and named you specifically and not another podcaster who uh, I know he's pals with who, uh, their entire format is often just breaking down the AEW show segment by segment. Whereas at least on 83 weeks, we're trying to draw some correlations between then and now your experience in WCW, what worked and what didn't work and applying it to the present product. Maybe that was lost in translation for Dax, but I want to give you a chance to respond because I did not like that comment at all. 
All right, so you heard from Conrad Thompson there, and you hear a little bit of disappointment in his voice when discussing this situation, but let's see how, uh, let's go back to the clip, and we'll see how uh, Eric Bischoff handles this situation. Well, either my skin has gotten so thick that I just don't react to things the way I used to, or maybe you just get wiser with age and, and having kind of been there when I was younger, um, kind of where Dax is right now. I, so I kind of get it, you know, I mean, let's, where is Dax in, in his career? He's got to say these things. He's out there promoting his company. He's defending his company. His boss made a complete jackass of himself on social media during the week previous to this appearance he made. So I get it. Because what else is Dax going to do if he doesn't have a gig in AEW? So I'll stop Eric right there. I, I do disagree with him. I understand that he's, what he's saying about towing the company line and everything, more or less, to kind of paraphrase what, what they were doing there. But uh, I don't agree that that's the only thing that they have to do because I'm pretty sure almost... 99.9 percent .9 positive they could go anywhere in the world they want and that includes wwe and wwe would probably welcome them back with open arms if nothing else just to stick it to aew so i, I don't agree with that point but i guess bottom line here is and we could continue to play clips and go back and forth but um i'd be doing point counterpoint all day i i guess i hope this whole thing and just to kind of wrap this up here, because um, I'm low on time, is a big misunderstanding. And I honestly would like to hear from our other podcast friend, uh, Brian and Jim, not uh, naming their full names, haha, but um, and see what they say about this situation because they do. Um, you know, they're kind of critical of, of Tony Khan and AEW. Heck, I've been critical. So I'm guilty also. But, you know, I'm just another guy with a microphone too. Um, I'm going to comment and do my opinions. And that's kind of, you know, that's, we we do. He's absolutely right. He he ran a po Dax ran a podcast. We absolutely do think do th do 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 things that we do. We do things for views and clicks, and you know we're all trying to make money. Um, I think eighty three weeks, and I think even Eric uh, mentioned this. Eighty three weeks was pretty successful uh, before AEW came along. And the little snide comment that, that was made about uh, bankruptcy, I think Eric did have one, and it got resolved. And, um, you know, their podcast is doing well. So that's I don't think money is an issue there. So I, I'd like these guys to, like, I don't know, get around a table and have a discussion or maybe one go on the other's podcast and straighten this out because I really don't think this is uh, – should be such a huge thing, but we'll see where it goes from there, fans. And thanks for tuning in with me on The Willis Show, and uh, you guys have a great evening, and I'll see you next time.